Uh, okay, so hello everybody. Um, my name is Jan Kwenhaf. Uh, I'm from the Czech Republic uh, and uh, welcome uh, welcome all of you, Roxana, Natalia uh, and, and other people. We will um, in this in this uh, short um, workshop, we will uh, make a presentation about about what is forecasting um, and uh, what are forecasting tournaments and uh, how to make uh, well calibrated judgments um, and uh, we will um, we will have a short uh, and Blanca if you can screen the uh, uh, share the screen please um, our session will be a little bit shorter. It will, it's called Forecasting as a Tool for Citizen Engagement. Um, and we will present the case that uh, we think that forecasting and forecasting tournaments are a good um, top tool to present, um, to present, um, is a good tool for citizen engagement. So, um, just to quickly introduce ourselves, um, this it will be me and Blanca speaking. Blanca, can you introduce yourself? Yes, hello everyone. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Blanca. I am director of Confido, and I hope you will enjoy the session. Okay, great. And my name is Jan. I am a director of uh, Czech Priorities, which is a which is a think tank in, in Prague, the Czech Republic. We are independent think tank. We try to improve evidence-based policymaking in the Czech Republic. Uh, we have um, many activities, but one of them is, uh, is um, focusing on uh, making sure that the government is better at thinking about the future. And uh, that's what we'll be talking about. Okay, um, on the next slide we have, um, just very, just uh, very shortly, the outline of this workshop. The uh, first, I will say a little bit about forecasting. Um, then we will uh, make these like two small showcases about um, showcases of how uh, it's possible to calibrate our estimates uh, with using a uh, Confido, which is an online forecasting tool or online um, estimating tool, and then. Uh, I have two last slides about uh, the fact that uh, forecasting can be used for citizen engagement. Um, okay, on the first part, we um, I just want to mention that forecasting is uh, just one of the methods of foresight. And foresight is um, basically a study of the future trends and scenarios. Uh, you probably know about foresight, can be called uh, strategic foresight, can be called anticipation or future studies, but um, it's it's all about, about thinking about the future. And it's um, on the next bullet, it says that we are, um, it becomes more um, visible to a lot of policymakers that this is really important. Um, and um, uh, that if we, uh, uh, can you blank up another slide? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very important because you, um, we have to make uh, decisions uh, with the future in mind. Like uh, this is a this is a nice quote from Ben Gretzky, which I really like. And uh, he said that he's so good because he skates where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. So, uh, so it's it's a nice. Um, um, quote that, that shows how uh, important and, and possible it is to, to, to estimate the, the future trends, and future scenarios, and then go, go towards them. Um, and if we don't do that in policy, we will make decisions and strategies that turn out to be, uh, to be both. So uh, on the next slide, we, um, uh, we have this, this, this thing that, for example, the European Commission and has also the Competence Center on Foresight, and uh, you can you can look at it. Uh, it's like they're doing a great job, and we are in Czech Republic. We are also like in in contact with people from this Competence Center, and uh, it's it's very useful. And the the um, the it's also important to mention that there's yeah there's many top many 
foresight methods. Um, on the on the right side, you can see that forecasting is just one of those many methods. There are other ones, maybe Delft, maybe scenarios or horizon scanning that um, that has a different that has a little bit different um, goal. They focus on um, not. They focus on maybe imagining various different kinds of the futures and then uh, then making then thinking about what to do in case of uh, these uh, these possible scenarios. Um, and the last thing I will mention is that like it's a lot of us know that it's important for strategic planning. Um, we know that like strategies should have some kind of foresight element by now, but. Um, but we often don't realize that uh, in policy making, it's also very important. Like when we do, uh, let's say, regulatory impact assessment, uh, we need to. Uh, we also need to like do foresight at first because um, we need to make policies that are that turn out to be relevant. So, um, in the in this small workshop, we will talk about forecasting and. Judgmental forecasting is um, the method that relies on the ability of many uh, people, so-called forecasters, to make good estimates. Uh, and judgmental forecasting is, is a method that's especially useful in cases where um, there are no prediction models or, um, or when the topic is very multidisciplinary. So for example, in case of in case of predicting uh, unemployment or inflation, there already are uh, good models. There's a lot of data on it. So, so judgmental forecasting might not be that relevant. But in case of these um, crises like, um, like COVID or, or Ukraine, uh, war in Ukraine, um, we need to make estimations um, about what will be the number of, of new cases of COVID. Uh, or how many Ukrainian immigrants will come to the Czech Republic this this winter? And these are the topics that nobody. You need to consider a lot of different things, and um, there's not many experts on on this particular combination of things. So it's useful to combine a lot of minds. And uh, I mentioned forecaster, but like who is a forecaster? Um, it's quite interesting because it can be anybody. It can be um, it can be any any one of you. Um, for example, it shows from from like some American research that um, let's say like mothers on maternity leave are good forecasters. Uh, for example, so it it's really it really depends on only a couple of things, and those are if you are a curious person, uh, if you want to look for new information, and so on. Then, if you want to improve your skill, because it 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 seems like an important thing to to be able to be like willing to go back and um, and calibrate yourself and uh, with with this intention to improve, and then uh, it's important to have to like be willing to change your mind uh, and update once a new evidence shows. Um, it can be. It's called like scout mindset, uh, like mindset um, of a person that is just willing to understand the world as it is and not not have this confirmation bias and and so on. Um, okay, and now we will uh, learn how to make well calibrated uh, estimates, Blanca. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, all right. So now we prepared an interactive practical exercise for you and it will basically help you or to show you how to make an estimate together uh, so we ask you now to open a new window on your laptop on, on your cell phone depends where you are and just to type or write down eu.confido.tools so please just write down this and then you should see uh, like a new screen and it asks you to write down your nickname so please, uh, we want you to feel comfortable. So you don't have to write your real name, just not to like feel uh, like, because there's only a few of us. So you can just write down your nickname uh, on this page. Uh, does it work for you? Are you there? You, that's configured at all. Does it work? Okay, I see Anna that she said, it's okay. Jan, are you, is it okay for you? Perfect. So, uh, and uh, there's just one rule for this exercise. Please don't Google the results. 
we will like now we will focus like on our estimation and we will try to just provide our best estimates without googling or trying to find out any information so the first uh, the first questions we have for you and you will try to think about is what percentage of the world population lives in the european union so please try to think about this question and move the slider according to your best estimate according to the estimate that's in your uh, in your head Mm -hmm. All right, uh, okay, so please finish providing your estimates, like you have like 10 more seconds to think about it, and then we close it, so it's like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and now we will look at the group prediction, and we can see that this forecast is around 10%, uh, 10% is the average, the wisdom of the crowd of this group, and it's plus minus four. And uh -huh. so this is the average value is 10.2. That's the average guess of this group. This is the red line. And now we have a look at the resolution and the resolution is 5.8. It used to be more uh, because of Brexit, it decreased by uh, 0.9, but still you can see that the number is uh, below. And here we can see the scoreboard, how close. Dream uh, was like, uh, literally was close to the uh, answer, APQ 9.9. .9. And we can see that uh, DAF, DAF means the crowd. This is like the ever the wisdom of the crowd of this group is relatively high, 9.5. Uh, I now want to ask you, do you want to try it once more? Do you want to ask, have one more question to test this exercise? Okay, so we go to have one more question. And it is like, in which year was the scholar Erasmus born? Okay, so again, it's not something we should Google. Just try to think and provide your best guess uh, about this topic and move the slider. You have like time to think about it. All right, so please finish providing your estimates and shortly uh, in 10 seconds, I will show you the results. And again, uh, here you can see uh, the group forecast and you can see that the group average is uh, 1490 uh, and it's plus minus 93, plus minus 100 years approximately. It goes all around like 14th century to like 17th century. And now I will show you the resolution. It is the year 1466. So your group was pretty close to this. Uh, you can see uh, like uh, the wisdom of the crowd work pretty well here. The group average was very well, was very, very great. Again, Dream, uh, Dream was like 10, who knows who it is. And Adaf is the crowd. So you can see again that the crowd was, is like 9.6 points uh, out of 10. It's relatively high. And we have like many examples of this. And even if there were, if there were even like more people in this group, uh, like there, the wisdom of the crowd or this duff would be even better. Usually it would be on the top or on the second. And what does it say? It tells us that uh, it is much better to, when we have, for example, group of experts, that it is better to rely on like wisdom of the crowd, on the average of all the experts, rather than on, one single expert, okay? And again, if we have a problem at work, if we have a big like, do, will we manage to reach a goal? Will, will, will we manage like, will this campaign will be successful? Again, it is best better to rely on estimate of everyone in the group rather on like one single person or one single expert. So, uh, so this is like this topic. And now I will move because now we were asking, I was asking you questions about the current state of affairs, you know? But we can ask different questions. For example, will Hungary leave the EU by the year 2030? And again, that's not topic. That's something we cannot find on Google now. Now you can Google it. And please now try to provide your estimate on this question. 
the, now, now it's a question about future. And uh, so try to think about it and then provide uh, your estimate on the slider. How probable you think it is? Okay, so please uh, finish providing your estimates. Uh, what do you think about it? And in 10 seconds, I will show you the wisdom of the crowd or what you were thinking as a group about this issue or about this topic. And here we go. So you think it's a quite highly probable, 37.5%, that's relatively high. Uh, and now who should say what is the correct answer? So here in this group, we have, it's only like five of us. So the wisdom of the crowd, crowd is not as strong, but there are like international platforms where are people who actually specialize on like being good forecasters or good estimators. And for them, it's like everyday job. They just go to the platform and they try to provide the answer. And you can see the answer on one of these like famous platforms. Uh, this is from Metaculus, it's 14%. And now I, uh, I will uh, ask Jan to continue uh, more about the theoretical part of, uh, of this topic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like on this, uh, this is a print screen from, to, from yesterday. So uh, you, can, uh, you can also go to metaculus.com and see, um, see how it's developing. But uh, um, if maybe you can Blanca sh uh, share again. Yeah, yeah great. Um, you on the on this print screen you can see that on the left side um you see that there's 50 people who uh, who gave their estimate um there's 73 total predictions um that is because you, as a as a as a user as a forecaster you can make um, as many predictions as you want uh, it's actually useful for you to um to make more predictions uh when um in time because uh, because the new information come up and the the probabilities change so so you you update your estimates um and uh you see that there's so the the current aggregate est uh, estimate is the chance of 14 percent um and uh, on the line you see you see the historical development of, of this chance um on another slide, uh, there's there's another kind of question that, that can be asked on these forecasting platforms. Uh, th this one is not about a, a probability of something happening, but this is about uh, the date that something will happen, something will occur. Uh, this is uh, the question about uh, when the Ukraine will regain control of Kherson. Um, and it's interesting here that there's a lot of forecasts actually there's 1000 uh, 1800 forecasts uh, and uh, you can see that it's quite interesting how the prediction changes in time um, like in uh, you can see that in june uh, ju from june and july the uh, kind of the, the the prospects of ukraine look bleak and and so people uh, we're forecasting that that um, the it will take longer to regain control of Kherson, but but then uh, since uh, since the end of August, the the kind of expected date is decreasing. So 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 it's some kind of estimation uh, that that reflects the the improving position of Ukraine in um, in this conflict. So. Um, and the current aggregate community prediction is that it might happen in uh, January. Um, there is um, 
more than one forecasting platforms uh, that are open to public right now. The, the one that we showed you is Metaculous. Anybody can register there and, and just, just practice forecasting um, and learn some interesting um, views of different people. Um, this, is, this is quite important, um, quite important aspect of forecasting actually, that you can read the comments and the, the, um, the process thinking processes that people go through and write down and you can like update based on that and learn so you can use metaculous there is also good judgment open platform there is uh, infer platform which is uh, being which is now being used by the by the american government uh, at some parts of the government um in in a private uh, tournament and there's also a slightly different model of forecasting and that's called prediction markets um prediction markets are different in a way that you have to you have to bet bet your own money uh on on the markets so it's like um it's there's more like uh, skin in the game uh you uh, if you are really sure about something you can bet money which which is like more risky but you can also make make uh actually quite a lot of money right now on on betting on prediction markets manifold markets for example polymarket or kalshi the problem is that in a lot of um uh, western countries the, the the prediction markets are considered gambling still so so they are um like legally it's legally difficult to operate um but it's 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 actually a very very useful tool um and now uh, the case for using forecasting for citizen engagement, we think it's a good tool because uh, of a couple of things. The first one is that, um, yeah, like future development is, is is a good topic for for people to think about. That's something that a lot of people are experts on. Actually, a lot of people like think a lot about the future in their specific domain or in their area of expertise. So, um, so if you have some complex questions like this, um, and you, you get people to participate, um, they provide, they actually provide useful information and they, and it, uh, and they realize that they are providing useful information. So, so they, they believe the process of public involvement and, and the, the policymakers get useful information and they can use it. So, so it's, it's a, it's a good um, good topic, we think. Uh, like, for example, if you if you are trying to estimate how many people will use this public library in the first year of operation, um, you can ask you can ask a lot of citizens in the city, and uh, and they they give you uh, they give you their estimates. Uh, aggregated estimate should be quite good. Uh, quite good estimate of how it will actually be used, the public library in the first year, but also in the comments, people can write um, that they think it will be less than 2000 people because this and this is wrong. Or on the other hand, they can write, um, they can write that um, it's like really useful. So so they, they estimate a lot of people will use it and it's great and, and so on. So you can also build a lot of, a lot of um, like um discussion and um you can so the another bullet is that uh you can use platforms that are able to handle thousands of people so there's not no constraint in uh, in this um it's you can make it of uh, like you can make it fun uh, you can run a tournament and uh, the people who have the best estimate can win money later or they can win a fame or or some kind of status so uh so, so that's that that's another benefit of forecasting tournaments specifically um by by doing this you can identify talent you can identify people who are who don't have like phds in future studies but they, they are they're good at at thinking about the future development um and th there's it kind of improves the discussion like people people have uh, it raises the the uh, the epistemic waterline that in increases the rationality of people who who discuss uh, because they they now uh, discuss about some specific uh, um, indicator in the future and they uh, they argue about one specific thing that all the other 
people agree that, about what they are arguing about. So, um, and uh, just to say about um, our um, our organization, we uh, we are um, organization called Czech Priorities, as I, as I said at the beginning. But we um, run this project that's called Forpol Forecasting for Policy, and we specify specialize exactly on this like how to use how to implement forecasting and foresight more into the policy making so that uh, all the parties can benefit from it uh, we operate mainly in czech republic but we but we have a partnership with metaculus and we'll be happy to get uh, some international partnerships as well and uh, so if you are if you know about any policymakers or people who run public deliberation processes and you'd be interested in to, to discuss this, um, let, let us know, and uh, we'll be happy to, to discuss. Blanka? Uh, all right. First of all, sorry, maybe my picture is sometimes a little weird, and it's because there is a fly sitting on my camera sometimes, and I'm always like trying to push it away, so that's the reason uh, for that. And, uh, I, and I want to add something, uh, something else about like forecasting, because we don't need to use this wisdom of the crowd to, uh, like only for like global topics. We don't need to ask these questions only publicly. We can also, for example, use this Confido app within our organization, and we can ask questions like, will we manage to reach this organizational goal by the year 2023? Or for example, will we be satisfied with this new supplier? And once we have this like, question we can like share it with all our colleagues or with the stake with relevant stakeholders who have something to say about the topic mm -hmm. and then we can make the wisdom of the crowd or the aggregate mm -hmm. the average value and this will provide us much better estimate so we don't need to ask these questions on like publicly like on metaculus and good judgment and stuff like that or on prediction market we can also use for example confido platform and you can like try to come up with this like wisdom of the crowd like in your within your own organization and you don't you don't have to worry about like you know leaking some information and stuff like that uh i'm the director of confido so in case you would like to use it for example you can just write me blanca at confido.tools and i will like share it with you after the session and you can start to use it for free immediately in your organization or just to test it if it works for your organization or not so uh so yeah so this is what it is and now i want to ask if you have any questions or some topics you are, for example, interested in. I have a question um, um, for both of you. Um, so have you ever uh, experimented or have, have you ever done uh, forecasting, but without uh, the use of technologies? Uh, I think it's like every day, like, for example, when I talk with my partner, if we, if what, if it's a good idea to do something or if you like it, if, of course, it's also a forecasting, like, will we, will it be fun for us to do it or not? And then we don't use technology. We just, we are only two or three or in the family. When we talk about like what we should eat on Christmas day, we don't use technology. We just say, oh, it would be probably good to do this or that. Or yeah. So this is like the type of forecasting in everyday life. But maybe you were thinking like you you mean more in the work environment or yeah 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 I mean like systematically because um, if you if you ever done it uh, like it as a uh, as a research method as a way also to engage citizens but not with the technology like with uh, for example during workshop and then the information are uh analyzed and sort of uh then represented uh exposed so it's not an immediate thing you no know? like i go on a platform and i put my answer so i was wondering if you have ever had okay not really um i think we um like there's one example that um uh, that we used for casting um in our work uh, and it could it was done uh, using using a tool but it could be done on paper as well uh, and that was um when the ukraine conflict started we um 
uh, we wanted to write, um, we, we realized that, that the Czech government needs to prepare accommodation capacities quickly and uh, and we, we wanted to write an independent study about how how many, um, yeah, what, what to do about integrating, preparing for integration of, of Ukrainian immigrants um, regarding housing and school and, uh, and work. And we needed to have these like, these estimates about how many people can come and we um so, so we asked uh, on, on the platform we asked um people um how many people they estimate that that the czech government will register by the end of the year and um within within one day we we got an aggregate prediction about four hundred thousand people um uh, but what was interesting and they were like only like 12 people uh, participating um so it could be done in a small like meeting or workshop and what was interesting was that like at that time in the media uh, the minister um of regional affairs i think and and some other other public officials were were like one order of magnitude lower so so that they were saying it might be about like um 20 30 50 000. Uh, and we were right and uh, well we were more right than them and uh, because and because of that we kind of um established these two scenarios that 200,000 people will come and 400,000 people will come and we wrote this whole study regarding those two scenarios and uh, yeah thank you any more questions <laughs> All right. So in that case, uh, thank you very much for your attention, for uh, for doing the session with us. Thank you for your participation in this interactive part where we wanted to present you with the wisdom of the crowd principle. And anyway, if you have more questions later or you want to ask or reach out or to find out something about us, please uh, send us an email uh, to Jan or to me. And I think we both will be very happy to discuss it further later.